I can just come over there. Okay. All right. Oh, nice table. Oh. People at home, if you want to start to throw what you think your rules are going to be in the chat, we're going to take another 35 seconds to identify the rules that are going on for each one of these tables. How are we going from input to output? Okay, let's take a look at numero uno, the first one here. Ooh, Smart Ink is turned off. Avery, what are you thinking about for a rule on this first guy here? What was it? What was it? I know, I'm trying to remember what it was. But, um, oh, wait, I didn't hand out those packets. Um, Go ahead, keep going. Plus four. Plus four, very good. Let me hand out those packets as well. So you're adding. And why did we think it was adding four instead of multiplying by some number? Olivia, what were you thinking? Because if you multiply, it would be too high. It would be too high, right? We're not getting more, like we're not getting bigger by a degree. We're adding the same amount every time. It's increasing by the same value as you look from input to output. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Now that second one is where it gets a little bit more tricky. Um, yes, it is one of those days, guys. Let's take a look at, let's try to identify that rule for the second one. What are we thinking about for the rule? For that second one. Ooh, Olivia's ready. What is it? From multiply by four then subtract one. Multiply by four. Then she said subtract. What was the button? What do you think? What were you gonna say? I was gonna say the same exact thing. So then why do you why did you think that was the rule? Because um from like to get to three from one you have to times three and two times three is six and six so it's not just multiplication and then if you do one times four it gets you four and if you subtract one it gets you three and then that rule applies everywhere else right yeah. two times four would get me eight minus one five times four is twenty minus one would get me nineteen yes so with these guys that have the two rule piece to it. Um, Joe, did you need a pencil, buddy? Yeah? Does anybody else need a pencil? We want to make sure that you're not just looking and once you, if it's not like a one and stepper, we need to try to do some things, multiple things, that could get me that new value. It's a little bit of guess and check here, my friends. Sometimes, like this first one, it's super obvious. Second time, you sort of have to do a little bit of work to see if you can figure out what that combo would be. Nice job, nice job. Very good. Now, let's take a look at our second piece, where we're going to review this concept that we talked about the other day called a function. Okay? And a function means it's a special relationship between your inputs and outputs. Your input, your x value, has exactly one output. Mm, but I don't remember what input means. Who can remind me what's another word or phrase for input? Olivia? If you're a beginning number. The beginning number. It's the beginning number or it's that value you know, the number you know. Good. And then we said output meant what? Bridget? Uh, your answer. Your output is your answer. Or that fancy math word that we like to use was our solution. And then what is the rule? 
Do you have to walk on the right side of the hallway? Olivia? Um, it tells you what you're going to do to your input to the output. Yes. The rule tells you what you need to do to that input value to get that output value. And your rule in a function is always going to be the same. You're going to do the same thing every single time. Awesome, awesome, awesome job, guys, my friends. Very good. Let's take a look at and let's talk a little bit about non-functions. Things that are equations you might see that are not going to be called functions. That's on slide number four. You don't have these in your packet, that's okay. A not a function is when each of the inputs has more than one output. So let me give you, let me give you a scenario, okay? So your input is a date, any date. The output is um, who has that birthday? W-H-O has that free day. Okay. So your input is a date, say February 3rd. How many people are going to have that birth? That is a birthday. Not a lot. Not a lot, but more than one, one right? So multiple people. Will have that birth that date as their birthday. So when you look at a function, this could be a function. I'm not doing something mathematical, but I'm looking at an input. I'm doing a rule to it of what's the birthday, who has that birthday, and I'm getting some outputs. For it to be a function, there has to be, and there can only be one solution or one answer. This guy has multiple answers, so it's not going to be a function. Okay, and this is going to make a little bit more sense when we look at some of these examples moving forward. Okay, so I have some, I have some function and non function examples in the next few slides. Okay, so if we scoochy scoochy down to slide number five, we have our targets for today. Two targets. Okay, like I said, we have two sort of distinct pieces to this lesson. First one applies to the first section. Second one applies to the second section. I know that a function is a rule with exactly one output for each input. So that means I know each input can only have one output or answer. Then you're going to be able to know that if a rule has exactly one output for every input, then the output depends on the input, is a function of the input. Like I said, this is going to be a discussion we're going to have in the second half of this lesson today. Okay. So what I need you to do now is in your packet, it's going to be that bottom on the first page, slide six for me. Okay, so now we're going to look at some scenarios. Okay. It says a person is 60 inches tall. Can you calculate their height in feet? Their exact height in feet. Think about it logically. If you know their height in inches, can you figure out their exact height in feet? Billy saying yes. If I ask Billy what it's going to be and I ask Bridget what it's going to be, is it possible that, that they, they could have different heights? Yes. If they do some math wrong, but if they both know the strategy, is it possible for there to be two different heights? No, no. no it's always going to be one height in feet for every, or one height in inches for every height in feet. So this guy is going, so it has one input. Each input has only one output, right? Only has one answer. So is this guy going to be a solution? I mean, a function? It's going to be a function. So now let's look at the rules. I have two different diagrams here that have rules written in them. We need to decide if this is going to apply to this story that we talked about. So we know the height in inches. We need to calculate the height in feet. If we look at the rule on the first one, it says convert inches to feet. 
Is that the rule that we're going to take to go from the 60 inches to the five feet? I mean, it's going to be hard, but, but is that what we're doing here? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is what we're doing. This is the rule that we would need to follow to go from inches to feet, right? So I would say yes for this guy because does it does this rule answer the question that we talked about up here? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, it's not very specific, but it's a general rule of what you have to do to go from the 60 inches to the five feet. Do you guys see that? So then now, if we look at now the mathematical side of converting from inches to feet, it says divide by 12. Is that how you convert from inches to feet? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. right? So another way to say this rule is you could say divide by 12. So there's multiple ways that you can write these rules. You can write a sentence like we did here telling me broadly what you have to do. Or you could be really specific and you can say, divide by 12, add two, then minus seven, something like that. Um, so that would really just be minus five, but you get what I'm saying. So this one also applies to this scenario. So when we're looking at some of these scenarios moving forward, you're gonna be writing some rules. And that means when you're writing these rules, there might be multiple ways. Lily might say one way, and then Billy might say, I wrote it this way. And we're going to have to decide, does it mean the same thing? Do you get what I'm, do you get what I'm throwing down? Multiple ways to write the same thing. Very good. So now we just looked at some examples. Now we're going to be writing our own rules. Let's take a look. At seven. If you're in your packet, you're going to go to the next page. Oh, did you want one or no? So we're going to be on the back of that first page at the top. Number one. It says number one. Okay, so it says a person is 5.5 feet tall. Can we calculate their height in inches? First of all, can we do that? In theory. Yes. When we do that, is there going to be one exact number? From feet to inches. Yeah. My output is only going to be one number. I don't know what that number is yet, but it's only going to be one number. This number of inches. It's not going to vary person to person. Your job right now, just like before, how we had those two different ways of writing this rule, I want you to read this scenario yourself, and I want you to tell me, what is the rule for this? How are we going from our input to our output? Then I want you to plug your input in given to you in this story up here and calculate what your output is going to be, okay? I want you to take one and a half minutes right now to write the rule, and then put your input in, calculate your output. People at home, I haven't heard from anybody yet. What's going on? Any people in the chat to let me know that they're there? Is anyone live out there? Can anyone hear me? Thank you, Sawyer. Perfect, thank you, Courtney. I just want to make sure you were alive. Alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. Aaliyah is here. Woo -hoo. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take another 35 seconds to write the rule. Determine what our input is from that story, that given piece of information, and then calculate what our output is going to be. Write it down. What's it going to be? How do I get my output? Okay, here we go. What is the rule that you wrote down 
for this scenario here. Remembering that there might be multiple ways we write it. Melissa Button. Um, I, I, I multiplied by L. Okay, so that's more of the specific way that you could write your rule. Good. Bridget, what did you write? I, I said convert feet into feet. Convert feet to inches. Does that mean the same thing? Mm -hmm. Did anybody else write it another way? You could have also written it as, not saying it has to be written this way, you could say X times 12. If you want it to be like no words, just mathematical phrases, 10 X times 12. The thing is, is I'm not expecting at this point for you to write it like this. I'm looking for usually like sentences or phrases, but I just want to introduce it. So what is our input in this story? What is the piece of information that we are given, Avery? Well, the height in feet, and that value is what? So the height in feet, which is 5.5. And then we have to do what that rule says, which if we want to be specific, we could say multiply by 12, or we could do, do what Bridget said, is convert from, inch, from feet to inches by multiplying by 12. How many inches? Is 5.5 feet going to be? Bridget? 66 inches. And how did you get that? You would do 5.5 times 12. So you would grab your calculator and you would say 5.5 times 12. Good. And you would get that 66 inches. Somebody last period said to me, Miss Jermaine, I know 5 feet is 60 inches. And I know that half a foot is six inches. And I add them together to get a total of 66 inches. This is an appropriate way of looking at it as well. I know that most people don't think about it this way, but we had like a really big discussion last period of like who is right and who is wrong. Trick question, you're both right, but some people sort of just think about it this way. You don't have to do it that way. I just wanted to acknowledge it in case other people did it that way instead of multiply. Okay? Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Okay. So, okay, this one's my favorite. This next one is my favorite. Let's take a look. I'm going to keep this up for about five more seconds and then I'm going to go on to the next one because it's my favorite. We're going to look at slide numero eight. Okay. Okay, so who can read for me the scenario that we're dealing with on this slide? Carter! Start with five and end with 15. Do you know the rule? Okay, start with five, end with 15. Do we know the rule? No. Okay. Okay, so some people are saying yes. Olivia, what are you thinking? Multiply by three. Okay, multiply by three. Does anybody have a different rule? Carter? Add 10. Ooh. Oh no. Okay, does anybody have a different rule? Bridget? Um, have an output of 15. Have an output of 15? Okay, Avery? Multiply by 4, then subtract 5. Alt by four, subtract five. Oh my goodness, this is so many different rules. Alyssa. Um, write 15. Write 15. They may all work. They all work. So can we know the exact rule that we had? Yeah. Oh, no. No, sort of. Because there's so many different ones that we need. You don't know the ones that they're specific. trying to show, but there's a bunch of rules that would work. But it says, do you know the rule? No. Do we know the exact rule? No. We don't know the exact rule. No, we know a rule. 
you know, a couple of, we have a, a bunch of different combinations that it could be. And, but we said that when we're talking about a function, there can only be one possible answer. When we're given this scenario, is there only one possible answer? No, there's a couple different answers that we could get. So is this guy gonna be a function? No. This guy is not gonna be a function. So we're not gonna be able to fill any of this stuff in because he's not a function. Because he has so many different possible outputs for that one set of inputs and in are so many, yes, yeah, so many different rules for this single input. Mm, I thought I was gonna trick you guys. Come on. Same thing happened last period. Listen, I tricked the algebra kids when we did this. I'm not really. Oh, oh, hand up, oh. hand on the Bible. I want to tricked the Bible. I tricked them. We should switch places with them. Scary. And they were like, yeah, miss, like, obviously that's a function. You know it. And then I was like, okay, but we have like a bunch of different combinations. But so, yes, <laughs> kudos to you. I yeah. knew that was going to happen today. I was so proud of you guys. So now we're going to look at number three. Okay, so if you're in your packet, you're going to pancake it to look at slide number nine. Okay, so now we have a number is five. Do we know the square of that number? The square? No. We don't know if it's like a right five or if it's the output or anything. We don't know the rule. Well, what, so what, so it says, do we know the square? So the rule would be squaring the number. So five squared. So it says the number is five. So we have a number is our input. Our rule that we have to do is square it. Do you know the square to get the output? And then the, that would be that number squared. So when you square a number, do you only have one possible answer? It depends how many times um, that is like it could be five, three, five, not two. Okay, let's take it one step back. What does it mean to square a number? Think about it. What does it mean to square a number? It looks like, for example, five up two. Oh, multiply. What does it mean? It means like an exponent pretty much. You multiply yeah. by yourself as many times as that number starts. Multiply the number by itself. And you know what? That's the same exact thing that Brian said in last period. He said, oh, to square a number, that means you multiply it by itself. Because a square is really specific. It's not an exponent is really general, right? An exponent is a, a number up some number. But when you say a square, it means a number up two. Multiply it by itself is when you square it. Five times five, seven times seven, two times two, Avery. So what if it was five and what an exponent of three, would it be five squared? That would be five cubed is what you would call it because it's three like three dimensions a cube yeah it's a little bit tricky so when you're talking about squared it always means you multiply it two times you multiply that number by itself so now knowing what squaring a number means when you take five and you square it or you take two and you square it is there only going to be one possible number it's going to be equal to yeah. yes yes so if we know a number and we can we know it's square? Yes. Yes, we're gonna get an exact value if we know a number and we have it square when we're looking for it square. So this is going to be a, a, a square number or a function because we're gonna say that this story is a function because you have a number and there's only one possible number that you're gonna get when you square it. It could be like a crazy decimal, but you're only going to get one possible answer. So if the rule is multiply a number by itself, I want you to do two things real quick. Number one, use, I want you to see if you can rewrite this rule another way. 
Thinking about how we said we can write rules multiple ways. This is a sentence. Can you simplify it? Can you say it a different way? Then I want you to put your input in that we were given in our story and calculate what's the square of that number going to be. Take a minute and a half right now. Nice job, Diego. No, it does matter. I can see it, Diego. I'll say it doesn't matter because I can see it. You guys back me up. Yes, yes. We can see your uh, messages. Everybody can see your messages. Oh, it says Olivia. Mm -hmm. hmm. I know that some teachers also like don't have it up usually, but I like to be able to see. Huh? It's not here to say it's one of the chat. I don't know. I don't know. The chicken chat, chicken chat. Okay, so. Let's think about this. The way that we can write this rule, this one is probably, this one can be written a bunch of different ways. Who has a different way of writing it? Bridget, what were you thinking? I said multiply the input by two. Multiply. Input by two. So when you say multiply by two, you're gonna say input times two or how would you how what would be a better way of writing that because multiplying it by two oh you know yes no but so for example if we have five and we we want to square it you're telling me i have to multiply five times two what's that get me so it's not going to be input times two it's going to be multiply input times five or, or you do yeah. input or by itself. Oh, let's go ahead. I wrote x times a. <laughs> so it's not going to be multiply input by two. It's going to be multiply input by itself or input again. So we want to catch the difference there. That's where that's where people get caught every single time I teach this is that where we forget we're multiplying number by itself, input times input. Uh, um, Alyssa Button, how else did you describe this one? Um, I did x times x. x times x, because we don't know what it is. x stands for a number, and you multiply it by itself. Yes, Alyssa Button. Very good, so s, x times x. Avery, did you have another way? Yeah. I said square the input. Square the input. That is perfect. It's another sentence that's telling you exactly what to do. Let's get this written down. If we don't have this written down, please. One final way that we can write this is x up to or oh, x, yeah. like superscript. Wait, what so it's an x up to, oh. right? So it's like, it's like just writing it as an exponent. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Once again, I thought I was going to trick you, but I didn't. Wait, I just Question before we move forward. So for your output, would you put the answer from like, doing the input multiplied by itself, or would you put like five squared? Well, you could, you could write it, you could write it five squared, or you could actually do that exponent out, and what would you get? 25. 25. So I would accept both of these as answers because they both mean the same thing. Which one do you prefer though? Um, if I was, if I was to give you this one, I would say in standard form, which would be this 25 to do it out. Okay. But that would be only if I said in standard form or in exponential form would be like this one here. But when in doubt, actually do the math out. Exactly, do it out. Okay, very good job. Let's look at another example here. Slide number 10 slash on that page, the bottom one down below. 
a rectangle has an area of 16 square centimeters. Do we know the length? First of all, how do we calculate area of a, of a rectangle? Olivia? Very good. Or length times width. Good. Same, but height means the same thing. So length times width. So if I know the area is 16, can I can you tell me exactly what my length or width of my shape is going to be? What could it be? It could be eight times two. Eight by two. Alyssa? It could be four times four. Oh goodness, it could be four times four. Avery? Six times one. Sixteen times one. One. So if we go back to this question, do we know its length? Can we know the exact length? No. no. Exactly. So if we're not given more information, we can't, we cannot find, we can't calculate that exact length because we have so many different combinations that it could be. So is this guy going to be a function? No, no. No, because it has multiple what? Rules. Well, not rules, because we, we, we know what the rule is. We are finding the area. But it has multiple input outputs. Outputs. Very good. So we say an input of an area of 16, output of side length, it could be multiple outputs. So this is not going to be filled in because we have multiple outputs here. Yes, question. Yes. Okay, so it has multiple outputs. I'm going to do it the same way we did it yesterday is we're going to sort of butt it up right to the back to the right to the end of the of the time frame that we have together. So I'm going to take about seven more working minutes and then we're going to go down for our mass break. We're going to end the period with mass break. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do 11 right now. Let's take a look. I want you to independently read through the next one or slide number 11 if you're looking at the slideshow. You're given a number. Do you know it's reciprocal? Think about it. Take a minute. Look at it. Try to define words if you don't know what they mean. My question for you, is there a word in there that we don't know? No? Well, there is. Go ahead. Okay, what word are you like, I'm not 100% on? Reciprocal. Reciprocal. And that's perfectly fine. Does anybody know what a reciprocal is? If we're looking at, for example, a fraction, two thirds, and they need to calculate the reciprocal, Tiana? Um, I flip over. Like, the, yeah. You flip it over, exactly. So the denominator becomes the numerator, the numerator becomes the denominator. What would be our reciprocal here? Three, three halves or three over two. So we can, we know what a reciprocal is now. It's the flip of a fraction. So if you are, or a number, because if you're given the number seven, seven can be written if we want to turn it into a fraction so that we can flip it. What would that be if that was, who wrote that as a fraction? Seven, this is Mr. Mean. Hi. She should be in my room actually. No, no problem at all. <laughs> Bye. There we go. So if I were to write it as a fraction, it would be seven over one. over one. Very good. And then if I wanted to reciprocate it or flip it, what would it be? One seven. One seven. seven or one over seven, one seventh. Very good. 
So now what I want you to do is I want you to put this rule in your own words. Put the rule in your own words. You can say calculate the reciprocal that works, or you could use sort of more lay terms that people would understand better. It's up to you. Then if you're given an input of three fourths, what would your output be? Oh my goodness, a little button mode. <laughs> She's a hot mess. So do we put three fourths in the input box? Or mm -hmm. the same That's going to be your input. What would your output be? Okay, Diego. I don't know what to say, dude. Get your AirPods or turn off your Bluetooth or whatever you want to do. How did you write the rule, first of all? I said flip the number. Flip the number. Okay. Did anybody write the rule in a different way? Avery? Isn't it like a half of a question? You can change the work. Um, so that's for dividing. So I wouldn't say that would be a good rule because that would be like dividing by a frat. Like it would be dividing. So I would say no to that one. Tiana. So you'd get an output of four over three. Very good. You could also, for a rule, you could take just the words that they gave you. Calculate the reciprocal. Okay? So these rules, if we remember, they can be really specific. They can be more broad. They can be in terms that you understand. We can write these rules in multiple ways here. Flip the number works. Calculate the reciprocal is another way of saying that. Good. So this would also be a function because you would only get one number as your reciprocal. Good. Very good, guys. So now before we go, we still have, I'm just gonna take like four more minutes, four more minutes because then we'll have a full 10 downstairs. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> you guys have a test next week, so I want to give you a little bit of a break. Let's take a look at this last piece here. Okay. So we've been writing rules. Yeah. The next step of this, the next progression of this, is now writing function sentences. Okay. When we talk about function sentences, we're talking about, and we write them in terms of output is a function of your input. So what you're looking to find is a function of the information that you already know. When you're writing in function, language, the output, what you're looking to find is a function of the input, that piece of information that we know. Okay, so let's break down this example that they gave us up here. We're going to color code it up here at least. We're looking and we're saying output is a function of input. So if we look at this description of this scenario up here, what is the output or the information that we're looking for? Oh, it's a button. The height in feet. The height in feet is what we're looking to find or calculate. And now we're going to say it's a function of our input, which is the piece of information that we know. What is the information that we know broadly? Bridget? Um, a person that's 60 inches tall. So the height in inches. So now let's write a function sentence using the context of this story. So output is a function of input. What is our output again? Height. Height in what? 
height in feet is a function of what? Our input. Height in inches. Very good. We are going to be writing these things called, I like to call them function sentences. And we're always comparing. Our output is a function of our input. What we're solving for is a function of what we know. Okay? So we're going to look at one example before we go down for our break. And we're going to write the function sentence for this example. What I want you to do is in your packet, I want you to look at this um, guy down here where it says using function language. If you're on the slides, I want you to scooch down to 14. Okay. So we always, when we're using function language, when we're writing a function sentence, we write it, what is a function of what? Who can tell me? Go ahead, Avery. Very good. Output is a function of input. Okay, so let's, I want to look at number two. A number is five. Do you know it's square? What are we solving for here? The square of a number, right? So the square of a number is going to be our input or our output? Output. A number is five. A number is our what? Input. Let's write this as a sentence. A blank is a output is a function of input. How would I write it? Avery? Five is a function of square. How do we write it? Oh, wait, no, I did it wrong. A Alyssa. Could you write it as five squared is a function of five? We could say that. That's really specific. That's using specific numbers. Let's broaden it out. Bridget? Square is a function of five. A square is a function of five is the number they're given, but we we call that a number. Okay, listen. I am not done with this topic. Tomorrow, I am going to be progressively shifting things because I'm not going to move on to the next topic because I think this is important. We're going to do more practice with this tomorrow. You can turn in the slideshows though because I'm going to migrate the slides that I want to migrate and then we'll go from there. Mr. Deshane, please call attention 3214. One more time. No, you don't need to take pictures of your work. You can take them, huh? Oh, I'll take it back then. You can, listen, you guys can use these papers. You don't have to, though. Listen, my friends at home, I'm going to throw you guys in the chat. Your homework for this evening. 15 minutes of Alex time. That is it. 15 minutes of Alex time. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Awesome job today. Hopefully we can get a little bit more action tomorrow, but we'll try our best. Friends up here, we can get ready to go outside, get your what you need for our mask break. You can line up and you can start to head down as well. I'm not. You're gonna do amazing. No, I'm not. You're gonna do amazing. I'm not. 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 I'm